So um, this patient is a 59 years old gentleman who has history of hypertension, chronic, chronic atrial fibrillation for more than 10 years. So he was previously put on warfarin but developed allergic reaction. So we offer satisfy uh, debit card chain that is self pay debit card chain but turned down because of financial reason. So uh, this patient was scheduled for LAO AAO today and the device is um, free of charge because of the live demonstration. So uh, this is the by K4 wheel. So there's no um, PFO or ASD. So next please. So um, the LAA is clear of foam bus. So next please. So uh, it's by plain wheel showing uh, there's no foam bus inside the LAA. So next please. So uh, we did some measurement. Um, the uh, orifice measure around um, 24 millimeters and the length of the LAA is, is around 34 millimeters. Next please. So um, a similar measurement in the uh, in this 60 degree uh, 90 degree um, uh, TEU wheel. So next, please. So uh, we have uh, Rida Ibrahim and Professor Wawa Lam as operator and TEU by Dr. Eric Wong and also anesthesia done by Dr. Simon Chen. So um, so we, we, we without further ado, we hand over the case to the team. Hello, welcome back. So uh, I'm going to do the case with Dr. Rida Ibrahim. Thank you. And um, so uh, we already uh, do the transeptal puncture. So maybe we can show uh, some of the pictures uh, that we have. Yeah, so we're working under uh, deep sedation, now, propofol infusion, and we are not under general anesthesia. We uh, got access from the right femoral vein. Uh, I did a pre-close of the vein so far with the pre-close. I like to do that at the beginning of the procedure. Uh, and then we did the transeptal puncture using the SL1 transeptal sheet with a BRK needle. Uh, and we we want to, uh, and we will show you yeah, what we uh, what we perform. So what what we want to do for this procedure, we want to do a, a nice posterior and inferior puncture on the septum. You have here the bicable, bicable view, which is 90 degree, uh, and you see that we are more towards the IVC, so more inferior on the septum. And typically, when you have a nice tent thing of the septum like that, you want to switch to the short axis view, yeah. which is the 45, pretty much six, 45 to 60 degree view, and you want to be far from the aorta in this view and this is the case and you see the aorta anterior and we are more posterior on the septum mm. and the goal being to to have a, a, a nice access to the uh, to the left atrium and then to the uh, appendage so we did the puncture re, uh, reach the uh, left atrium and then directly in the sl1 catheter we push the uh, mark pigtail and when you have a good puncture in a good location like this it's going typically directly in the appendage yes, that's right. and it was the case so yeah, it was the case and now we reach the uh, appendage with the mark pigtail it's a five french mark pigtail and we are going to do the angiogram for uh, life yeah. uh, for you yeah one very important point to mention is that after transeptal puncture we usually would give heparin uh, because this is a very thrombogenic uh, condition so we are pretty aggressive in terms of giving heparin, we'll give 100 units per kilogram. So make sure the ACT is at least 250 to 300. It's better to be somewhere near 300. And also we have to make sure after transeptal puncture, we measure the left atrial pressure. So th the mean left atrial pressure in this patient is about 12 to 13, which is perfect. Because sometimes if the patient is too hydrated, during the procedure, you will find a lot of air embolism. Uh, and also the measurements of LA uh, may not be accurate because the patient is just too dry. So now we are going to do an uh, injection in our cranial uh, projection. So are we ready to go? Ready to go. Yeah. So we'll do a cine. So this is an injection, uh, beautiful angiogram so far. Typically in the aerial cranial view, we define better the proximal portion of the appendage that we see very well, less well the distal part. So to yeah. see better the distal part, I like to do also the aerial caudal view. So aerial uh, 30, typically caudal 20. Uh, and we should, in this view, appreciate better the uh, distal part. Yes. You're correct. All right, so uh, let's do uh, this. Uh, yeah, all right. Very yeah. good. All right, okay, Cine. So Cine, and injection, the other... Uh, okay. 
other uh, uh, possibility is to do power injection. Uh, typically, I like to use 20 cc at 10 cc per second, but here it's good enough. It's a quite large appendage. Yeah, I, I think, think it's large. It's large. Uh, you can appreciate that better on that view, actually, but it's a bit mis misleading. Uh, so I guess actually, in condo view, you see this is a bit foreshortened. Uh, yeah. Looking at the markers of the appendage, uh, the marker of the pigtail, you, you can tell this is foreshortened. Uh, yeah. uh, the measurements usually at this uh, angle is often not very accurate. Yeah, but I would agree, uh, our condo is a very useful for you if you want to manipulate your catheter from one position to <coughs> the other. Uh, that's very useful because this is the view clearly separate all the lobes. So it tells you where your catheter is. In a cranial view, uh, it might be useful if you deploy a device in proximal part because it makes the neck uh, longer. So uh, it gives you more longer working and length. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you don't know and when, the when you manipulate the catheter the because the those lobes are overlapping. Also. So you don't know where the tip of the catheter the is. Yeah. So All right, sh shall so we, do we, some we, we should do some measurement, correlate what we find at the echo and uh, at the uh, angiogram. Can we uh, do the yeah. measurement? I, I like to remove my pigtail uh, from the appendage while we are doing that because we, we don't want to have any thrombus on the device. Yeah. Can we go AP, please? Yeah. I think it's, uh, well, I have different view. I think it's safe to keep a pigtail there. Yeah, it's uh, safe instead also. Instead of just put it, park a stiff wire there, that would but be uh, uh, if we uh, The thing is, to put the uh, delivery sheet, uh, I like to put the stiff wire in the uh, upper yeah, primary yeah. vein. Yeah, that's so, uh, also a good idea. So I, sh I suggest to just remove the uh, pigtail, Yeah. Uh, leave the SL1 cat uh, sheet in the left HM, Yeah. Only, okay. only like that. So can we measure here on the Yeah, angular? we can measure it. Can we measure it outside? So on echo, uh, can you comment what you uh, measure so far? Or? I'm going to go back. Train you, man. Train you. Back, back. Okay, stop. Okay. So the depth is definitely uh, it's, it's definitely deep enough that appendage. Uh, we we want at least one centimeter to deploy the uh, cardiac plug that we are planning to use for this case. Uh, concerning the size, we need to match what you found what, with what we uh, we're going to find here. Uh, so it's helpful to use the uh, mark pigtail. Uh, so now he's going to measure the RAO uh, in RAO cranial. So what you said again, 24 for the awesome? 20, 29, and the landing zone? So he has on echo pretty much 24 or 26. Uh, for the landing zone, we should keep keep that in mind. We will definitely use the device as it's oversized for uh, the landing zone. So if we find 26, uh, we will not select the device uh, less than 28 uh, unless we find bigger on the angiogram. Uh, we should keep in mind also that the device that we are going to select uh, if we consider the lobe, uh, uh, the disc will be at, le at least six uh, millimeter larger than the lobe uh, that we're going to select. So initial measurement for us, it's 30. Uh, what device we're using? Are we using an ACP device? We are planning to use here an ACP device, yeah. 
I think we are going to be at the upper limit of the uh, uh, for this device, uh, the largest device that we have for ACP is 30, as you maybe know. Uh, the, the AMLED, the second generation device, the largest one that we have, it's 34. Uh, it's a clear advantage. Uh, but here, we even if we find 30, uh, we can we can have always the possibility to deliver the device more potentially distal in the appendage. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's quite big. Uh, in this case, probably we have to go for 30. 30, 30 yeah, device. I think we uh, we have no choice. I think you uh, why, why you just you just measured 30? Yeah, uh, 30 at the landing zone. So, so I have see. no choice. We need to select the largest one that we will potentially need to deliver a bit more distal. Yeah, we huh? probably need to deliver a bit distal uh, because it's quite big appendage. The largest uh, device that we have now is 30. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so we are in the left atrium. Uh, the goal now is to uh, put something in the left upper pulmonary vein, a stiff guide wire to have yeah. a very good uh, track to deliver to, to put the delivery sheet. Yeah. Do you have a multi-purpose? Yeah. Yes, we have. Uh, multi-purpose catheter, please. So we still have the SL1 uh, sheet in the left atrium. We will take the uh, uh, multi-purpose catheter, put the uh, wire inside. Uh, we'll try to reach the left upper primary vein and leave in place a stiff guide wire. Okay. Uh, we will need the uh, delivery sheet huh? yeah. also. So I'm preparing the delivery sheet uh, while you are doing the procedure, okay? Can you increase the decrease the magnification, please? Can you go to 25, maybe? 25, the field of view? Or 20? Yeah, very good. So the plan, uh, where are you going to position your wire, the upper or the lower lobe? So typically, I like to go in the left upper pulmonary vein. Uh, are we in the pulmonary vein on the echo? Are we on the appendage or? We are in the appendage, I think. Eh? Okay, very good. So I'm planning to go in the upper pulmonary vein if it's possible. It's always possible also to put the, the wire in the, directly in the appendage. There's a bit more risk to perforate, to be honest. So it's always safer to go in the, the upper pulmonary vein. Do you have a regular wire with you, Alan? Yeah, I have. Okay. I'm very happy so far with my transeptal puncture because we are going always in the appendage. So it means that we are directly facing the appendage. Yeah. <coughs> so, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, that's a regular wire. You might need to go to IO. Uh, if you want. Yeah, that's better. And we are always in the appendage. Yeah. Yeah. I think you better go to IO. Yep. Yeah. IO is the position that you can appreciate anterior and posterior better. So usually the the pulmonary vein is a posterior structure. You see now the sheath is more uh, uh, deviate to anterior. So we have to rotate the sheath to more posterior, yes like this and then we probably yeah rotate more posterior to see whether we can't yeah go to pulmonary vein yeah, yeah. you see our uh, that's uh, one of the tricks to go to pulmonary vein i learned this trick from my ep colleague uh, they are very good uh, in go to pulmonary vein of course uh, so we need a stiff wire yes so we are in the primary vein with the uh, multi-purpose catheter. I will remove the regular guide wire, put the stiff one, uh, which is an ampl an ampla super stiff guide wire. So the wire is coming. And we are going to remove the multi-purpose 
and the SL1 to put the um, delivery sheet in place. Uh, we should probably um, show that sheet yeah. to you. Can we zoom in that sheet? Uh, yeah, we have the structures here. So can we zoom? Yeah. So I'm going to show you the sheaf. Uh, this is the 45, 45 degree uh, designed, uh, specially designed sheaf for area closure. Uh, you see there's basically two angles in the sheaf. There's one angle in the proximal portion, another 45 degree, and the distal portion. It basically means that when you rotate the sheaf, you can change the axis of this uh, delivery catheter inside the appendage. Uh, because uh, the orientation of the lobe after deployment, uh, the relationship to the uh, appendage, proximal part of appendage is very crucial. So you have to be uh, in exact position. So uh, in order to do that, actually the correct positioning of the sheep is very important. So we probably would demonstrate that techniques while we'll uh, deploy the loop. loop. The, the other thing that we should say about this sheet is it's why I, w w the reason that I took so many so much time to put a wire, the uh, uh, stiff wire in the left upper primary vein, is that the sheet has two two cur 45 degree curve and a very short dilator in front of the uh, of the sheet. So to to be able to push that sheet in the groin. It means that you, ne you, you, ne you need a very stiff guide wire as a support to be sure that there's not kinking in the groin. So it's why I put a very stiff wire to be sure that we are going to be able to send that sheet in the groin. The other uh, tips also is to open very well the skin here. Yeah, I think, I think this sheet. is a very good comment. I always complain to St. Jude people because compared with the ASD sheave, you see this, this dilator is just too short. It make it very difficult to go through the skin as well as go through the septum. I think the idea, original idea of having a short tip is because they don't want to traumatize uh, the appendage uh, by having a long dilator sticking out. But with the protection of the wire, that shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully they are going to address this issue in the near future. So uh, I have ju just now the wire in place. Uh, can you just uh, yeah, sure. still don't have the multi? Yeah. Peter, can, uh, this is Gabriel. Can I can I ask you, have you got any experience of using just a single curve um, uh, delivery shift system, or or you just use uh, double curve in all your cases? So typically, I'm using uh, the 45 45 degree uh, sheet. Let's say in 95 percent of my procedures. So sometimes, very rarely, we're using only the 45 degree sheet. <coughs> Which what circumstances will you consider? So sometimes when the uh, I feel that the um, the appendage the angle it's more straightforward, I, I tend to use a 45 degree. But uh, as I said, it's very rare because I feel that it's important to have two curve to uh, to go more anterior uh, uh, in the appendage. So I have a short di I, 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 so as I said, we really want to open very well the track in the groin. So there's two things that I like to do. Uh, I like to open very well with uh, an hemostat, the, uh, the track here. And I like to also to put the, uh, just a dilator or the short sheet uh, as a unit uh, to open also the track before the delivery sheet itself. So I like to do that to open very well the track. Because the worst thing that can happen at this point, as I said, is to kink the guide wire in the groin. Okay, okay. And if that thing happens, uh, you, you need basically to sometimes to start from, uh, from, from the beginning. Okay. So I think we have go. to keep the sheath because we need to load the device first. Before we put uh, in the shift, yeah, we are going good. to prepare the device. Very good. Yeah, and show they how to do it because this is still the ACP. Uh, because of the way the wire, uh, stabilizing wire was arranged, so this device needs to be backloaded. So we are going to show you how to do that in a minute. So we select the 30 millimeter device, as we said, the large, which is the largest one available. Yeah. I think it's going to be barely enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll yeah. see. Let's see. We are, we are facing a challenging case today. 
In fact, we face challenging cases every day. Yeah, exactly. So appendage is not always going to be easy, especially when you're facing a very large anatomy. So uh, yeah, we can talk about that later, whether you should release it or not. I think deployment is not an issue. It's always stability. Yeah, uh, stability uh, thing. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. let's show you how to de uh, uh, prepare the device first. All right, let's... Uh, Can we zoom in to this table? T 30 millimeter device. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, more 50, uh, 50 mil uh, lure lock syringe. Yeah, we got it. Thank you. Why? Hello, Hello. Testing. Okay. Testing. Okay. So I heard that uh, we just have a, another ASD case uh, on the other room. Uh, they are about to deploy the device. Maybe uh, we we'll just leave you for a while uh, for their case, and then you come back for this case. Would that be all right? That would be fine. Okay. Well, yeah. the skin. And we pre dilate. Uh, that okay. we pre dilate. So yeah. have Can we follow, follow the skin? Uh, yeah, the groin. So yeah, we have to sometimes uh, just make sure uh, it is smooth when we go out. Okay, yeah, At and then we have to rotate a bit, make sure, yeah, it's coaxial to wire, it's uh, along the wire course. And then the second part would be difficult to go through the septum, but since this time we parked the wire in pulmonary vein, so the support is better. You okay. want to remove the... Uh, yeah. so, so we are I'm the going to remove the dilator as well as the stiff wire. Okay. Yeah. So typically where we are, uh, where, where we are in the uh, left upper pulmonary vein, when we pull on this sheet, we should fall directly in the appendage. Uh, especially if we have a good transept pump puncture, and it's the case here, I think. Okay. We want to be... Uh, gentle with the sheet. We don't want to perforate this appendage. And this is uh, what we can appreciate at the yep. Aquatic. We are in the appendage. appendage. Yep. I'm happy with the position, so we are ready to deliver the device. Yeah, so we are going to deliver it in cranial view, I suppose, right? Yep. Yeah, so we would um, yeah, do it now. So I guess for the deployment, we should probably have the angio and the echo together. Uh, um, All right. to, to, to see both yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, can we have the reference uh, 30, 20? So the sheet that we are using to deliver this uh, 30 millimeter device, it's a 12 French, uh, no, it's 13 French sheet, sorry. So I'm advancing the device slowly uh, through the sheath. Now, at the same time, uh, we're actually uh, giving this patient continuous saline flushing as well, just not to introduce the air into the system. Now we stop the flushing. So I pull back, uh, make sure uh, it's still connected. It's always, okay. good also to st always good also to start to fluoro while we are yeah. on the right side. Yeah, if let's go to uh, our cranial 30 and 19. Would you please magnify? So when we start to fluoro on the right side, if we see air, we can always de air uh, before we go on the left side. So we are now uh, where we want to be. Uh, I will start to... Yeah, we can do an injection if you want. Yeah, you can you check can, the yeah. position. So I'm, I'm quite happy. We're quite far in the appendage. So we yeah. should probably start to deploy here. Yeah. So what I, I, I want to do yeah, I can in have this you case... Yeah. It's typically I want to stay stable in the appendage. I want to pull back on the sheet just to create a ball with this device, like this. Yeah, and then we clock and, and count the clock. At this point, we can do another injection if we want to confirm yeah, the position. Sure, sure. So you see now we are in the distal part of the appendage. Yeah, you will see that with uh, the injection. So, Sydney. 
we are more along to the the distal part of the device is more along to the axis of distal appendage. You see the proximal appendage, the axis is not that uh, aligned. Yeah. So in order to align, uh, so we have to counterclock the sheath and bring the device a bit proximal before we further deploy the device. See, uh, wait, go here maybe, one one. Yeah. Uh, I'm turning counterclock now to go more posterior, and I will ask maybe to uh, YY to push yeah, the cable. Yeah. So we are not yeah, not Laurel. unsheating the device anymore. We will push on the device at this point, yeah. because the device tend to jump back, and we will try to to prevent that by pushing on the device at the same time. So the device should remain pretty much at yeah, that push level. A bit in. Yeah. 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 And then so the device is open now. Yeah, you see, we deliberately uh, try to open the device a bit distal. Uh, in this case, because we know that uh, we open it up too proximal, this is a large appendage. Then it are going to jump out. And always, you you can inject. Uh, we need to appreciate also well the position on the echo. Are you happy on the echo uh, on your on yeah. your side? Uh, I think yeah. you, we should we should be sure that we are behind the circumflex artery. Yeah, which you is see at the nine o'clock the there's a radio lucent, uh, the echo lucent dots. That's in fact the left circumflex. So we want the device to be as distal as to the distal circumflex. Yeah, and that will prevent. Okay, this is a sign telling us that. Uh, the chance of embolization will be lower if we deploy the lobe more distal to the uh, left circumflex. So I feel that we have a good position. What do you think? Yeah, let's try to deploy the disc. Yeah, deploy the disc. So uh, we can now pull back on the sheet. Uh, yeah. All right. Pull back, generate the disc typically in the left atrium if it's possible. Yeah. And here usually you have to release a bit of your counterclockwise force because uh, previously we have a lot of counterclockwise tension in the system. So we want to release that. So, and then we gradually open up the disc. So we form it in a diamond shape because this will cause a pushing force. This is kind of a stability testing already. And then we gradually push in the device. Okay, so looks uh, not bad. Not bad, care? but we uh, we uh, can potentially cover better the ostium. I don't know if, what you think on the echo. Uh, uh, can we magnify the echo so everybody can see? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, just echo. Yeah, just echo. So the device, the disc of the of the device, it's a bit in, especially close to the primary yeah. vein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's always an option to try to recapture the disc and try to redeploy that over the ostium. Yeah, you can do that, but in this case, I'm always worrying because yeah. the proximal part is too large, mm. and uh, if you try to reposition it proximally, then stability will become a concern. Yeah. So, um, well, a lot of people saying um, we shouldn't be too aggressive, try to reposition this device too proximally. Because if you're looking at how the watchman device closed the appendage, they usually will close at this level. They yeah, won't I close agree. it more proximally. Mm -hmm. And if you position the device and you ended up with instability and there's high chance of embolization, then it's not good. So, and uh, the other, the other the thing also, I, I really have, I have the impression that if we redeploy the disc over the ostium, I think it will tend to go back inside yeah. after all. You see this patient actually having a very long Coumadin ridge from echo. Can we go back to echo? Olaf, you want to yeah. make a comment? Why don't you just try to reposition the disc once? I yeah, mean, I can, I can, yeah, of course I can. I can. I can. Yeah. Because yeah. it falls back into the position, you say it's a good position, then yeah. it's okay. Wait, okay. Let's do that. In, no, no, no. Okay. In order to do that, we have to unsheath more. No, no, no. And then we pull back. And then we pull back. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I will, I will recapture the disc. Pull more on this device. I think it's going to be a very good stability testing at the same time. Yeah. And then uh, pulling hey, can on we this. Can echo as well? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah. 
show the echo? Do you see the echo? Maybe both at the same time, if it's possible? Both at the same time. Yeah, echo and foro at the same time. Can you, now I'm pulling quite hard on this device, so it's very stable. There, it's no, no problem. Yeah. See, now the device came back a bit. Uh, yeah. I redeployed the disk more approximately, but it falls again. It falls back in. Yeah, I mean, all of I understand that we always can try it. I, I mean, in this case, my impression is that the, the reach is just too long, and the disk is not large enough. And um, even though I can try very aggressively to bring it very proximal to the, co the tip of the Comodin ridge, it will fall back in once mm. I unscrew the cable. I agree fully with you, actually. Uh, Huawei, I don't know if you have any, uh, any other comments on the panel or in the room. Uh, but I, I feel that the device is stable, is holding well the advantage. Yeah. This is uh, the best result that we can get from that. I think, it, and it's a very good result, actually. Yeah, and uh, Color Doppler didn't reveal any uh, pulmonary vein obstructions. Maybe you can show the velocity or okay. pulmonary vein velocities. Um. And of course, uh, to leave it like that, some people say you might end up at that space at around uh, four, three, four o'clock. This so-called codus act and it may end up with thrombus formation. I don't believe it. I mean, most of the thrombus I've seen on the device are on the screw, yeah. so on the hub. Yeah. Um, so uh, if that's the case, then in Watchmen, every patient has caudal sac. So, I mean, we need to do also to review the echo carefully. The echo on this view, is, it looks perfect. Yeah. We are behind the circumflex okay. artery. There's different thing that we are uh, want to look for yeah. before the release. Can we do explain here? Explain. Uh, explain. Explain. So we want function. to be sure the device is well compressed. That's one thing that we are looking for. We want to be well aligned with the axis of the appendage. It's the case here. Typically, we want to, go to have a good separation between the lobe and the disc. Here, we have less separation because the disc is uh, more inside the ostium. And typically, yeah. we want a, a nice concave disc, which is also pretty much the case here. Yeah. Uh, we always want also to appreciate the position of the device uh, on the echo. Yeah, especially uh, when you do it in uh, another orthogonal view. So we can do it. Uh, now we're showing the explain function of 3D echo. So what do you think? Is there any comments from the audience about this <laughs> another view? What, 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 we understand this is the largest device you have, but yeah. um, if there is a larger device, would that actually do better than this 30mm um, device? Uh, potentially, I think it's uh, uh, especially to cover the awesome, to be honest, uh, because a larger device can be potentially put more a bit more proximal. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, potentially. Well, I, I would go for a larger device for two reasons. First, uh, I can at least dare to put it more proximally, and secondly, they will be associated with a bigger disc. Yeah. With a bigger disc, actually, the chance of covering so-called the tip of Kumudin Ridge yeah. Yeah, to, to, to the circumflex, then it would be higher. Well, uh, people use the uh, cardiac CT to assess uh, Tavi. Uh, is there a place for cardiac CT in the assessment of uh, left atrial appendage anatomy? I think, I think yes. I think uh, CT is a very good test to define the anatomy, but also to do the measurement. Uh, only limitation, it's often we do the procedure yes. for old and sick people with bad renal yeah. function. So that's, in my mind, the only limitation of CT. But CT is very good to before the procedure, but also after to uh, look for thrombus and residual leak around the device. So, yeah. yeah. CT, okay. I think, it's a very I think good we are running out Thank late of time, and Lars is waiting to deploy the ASD occluder. So we should probably uh, so we release should the device. Probably or release the do you device? want to do a quick injection before uh, yeah, sure. release, just to be sure that we are still. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're still good on the echo. Yeah. Yes, still good. Okay. Okay. Stable and no leak. Yeah. So tomorrow. let's do a quick injection here. Yeah, uh, okay. See, there's no more flow in this appendage. Very good result. So we think we should release at this point. Yeah. Uh, so it's a counterclock rotation of the cable, a uh, usual thing for the uh, plaster device. Four or five turned. 
We are not expecting too much movement of this device after release. Oh. Very good. Okay. And this is the this is it. Uh, Cine. Uh, maybe Cine with potential injection at the same time. Yeah. It's going to be uh, the end. Yeah. Just if I may make a comment okay. on Dr. Wang's question about CT. Uh, there is another method to close the appendage, which is the lariat uh, yep. device, yeah. which is a combination yeah. between uh, endovascular versus uh, and uh, you know pericardial tap. And for us, when we do the procedure, mm -hmm. CT angiogram is a must to assess the shape and location of the appendage because if the appendage is retro pulmonary artery, then this technique is not good for closure of the appendage. Yeah. Yeah. So CT yeah, and geography right. is important. Yeah, it's a yeah. very good point, Ziad. And uh, the other thing that we're looking for for Lariat is the size of the appendage. And the appendage needs to be less than four centimeter large yeah. also. So different thing that we need to look on the uh, CT scan. Yeah, I think it is another interesting paper being published in Jack about the morphology of LAA that might predict the risk of stroke. And so um, there are a lot of potential clinical yeah. use for CT. Yeah. And so we will look into that in the future. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. So uh, in this case, much. normally I just remove the sheep, but in this case I, I will keep the sheep for a few minutes in the, in the left atrium. Uh, uh, this is uh, usually a lesson uh, <laughs> uh, told me by Professor Park. He said, in case you have any worries, keep the sheep for a longer time. Like, like 10 minutes? Yeah, or? five, 10 minutes. All if right. It's okay, then, then it's fine. Yeah. Otherwise, you can simply uh, just go and snare the device. All right. Okay. Yeah, but I don't Thank think we, we, have we, we have time today. Let's go to the last case. Uh, we